Hey, this is Steven from RC Engineering, and today we're going to be doing a review of my DJI Phantom 1, the FC40, otherwise known as version 1.1.1. This is definitely old technology today, and I wanted to see if it uh, if it really stacks up to the competition now. Of uh, we just recently had the DJI Mavic Air released at 799. Then we had the Mavic Pro at 1000, Mavic Pro Platinum at 2000, and then also the um, Spark at starting at 400. So how does one of the very first drones that DJI released, obviously this is three versions in to the version number one. This is the very last uh, update they made to the version number one. This is the FC40. It re was released in January 2014, so that's about four years ago. So we're going to take a look at the technology here. So I have the FC40 uh, camera, and then I have my uh, my cell phone down there. And so we're going to see how well the video and Wi-Fi distance is. And we're going to be flying a Venom 2200. So let's go ahead and start this up. Make sure all of our positions are up. Turn on the controller. And we're going to turn on the quad. And we're going to be watching for the uh, home to be set to this position. And I'm here at Grossbeck. You guys are probably familiar with it. I'll show you guys what position you're probably most familiar with it. But we're gonna be watching down here for a good signal. And here you can see we have good picture. I'm gonna put on my hood so we get a little bit of uh, uh, some of the wind away, but uh, not much wind. Um, it's pretty quiet today. I did do this review once already, but it was very high wind, so I decided that uh, I should film it again to have some more of uh, more adequate wind. So again, back in the day, this ran about $600, I believe, back in the day. Now you could probably find it for uh, $250 um, or so with a whole bunch of accessories. So we're waiting for the rapid flash, rapid green flash. There it is. So that's set to home. So now we're correct at home. We're in GPS lock. We have green flashing, we're ready to take off. We're in the FC40 app, connected with Wi-Fi through my, um, this is a Droid Turbo 1. We're gonna start the video, and then we're gonna use this as the timer. We bring our throttles into the center to take off. Let's go ahead and take off. The very first thing we're gonna look at is uh, altitude hold and GPS hold, so I'm off on the sticks right now. You guys can kind of get some video here of the stream. Stream is uh, pretty laggy, but otherwise okay. And again, this is flying on a 2200 3S 30C Venom. And now you can compare it to a newer technology where they have the lower, uh, the downward facing cameras and they can see where the ground is and it would be rock solid. But right now it's pretty good with uh, not touching any controls or anything like that. It's pretty stable. So let's let's do some flying around and uh, check that stability again. Again, no on-screen display here for anything like altitude or anything like that. So or or speed or anything like that or ground speed or location or map or waypoints. This is a basic um, aim and fly kind of drone here. So we're gonna fly around and see what kind of distance. I'm very low on the throttle. I'm very low on the pitch here. And also, this just has the vibration mount, so there's no gimbals or anything like that flying on this guy. So here I am. Gonna gain a little bit of altitude. I'm gonna try to fly this thing for some endurance. You see it is getting bumped around a little bit by the wind. Gain, gain a little bit more altitude. We're just gonna kind of fly around here at its max distance. You see we're low here on uh, signal to the point where we have to come back. Luckily the Wi-Fi signal does not, if it's gonna break, it's gonna break within your uh, line of sight. So you could completely see where you are and this FC40 camera will break that before you have um, um, you'll break video before you break transmitter so you'll never extend pass where you could see so let's go ahead and do some full speed passes so here's full forward 
And it's flying a good 35 miles an hour or so. 35, 40 miles an hour. So that's that's up to snuff with uh, today's Mavic and maybe even as fast as uh, another one that you might be familiar with which is the Air which now does 40 miles an hour and the Mavic does about 35, uh, 37, 38, something like that and the Sparka does 31 in sport mode. So here we are flying over the field you guys are probably pretty familiar with that field down there. Uh, that's normally where I fly a lot of my smaller planes not where I fly any of my bigger planes, but uh, we're going to be looking over some of this field here. And then um, at the end of this video, or on part number two, depending on whether I want to edit it or not, I will add a I'll add the uh, the footage that I got off of the SC40 on there for you guys. But as you guys can see, it's okay for setting up shots. It'd be way better if I had something attached to that vibration mount where I had a 5.8 gigahertz down link so I could do you know standard FPV racing equipment low uh, low weight low weight racing equipment stuff and what you'll notice a lot on the footage is that a lot of like the toy drones now will actually take almost as good a video as this but the um, the cameras weigh a lot less and they don't have built-in batteries this one has a built-in battery so you're worried about charging it all the time and it is very inefficient on the battery so here this is about my max distance so that's maybe that's maybe what um, at, at least 300 meters uh, 100 meters that's at least 100 meters so ge generally these Wi-Fi drones are, way, are rated at 100 meters which is about 300 and, uh, 3300 uh, 330 feet, 330 feet range before you lose the signal. And I believe this can it's one of the one of the other but either the camera's 2.5 gigahertz and the controller's 5 gigahertz or the camera's 5 gigahertz and the controller's 2.5. But uh, we're getting decent downlink to where I can sort of see where I'm going. It's very laggy as you get to max distance so that's something to watch out for. So obviously not nearly the distance that we are looking at for something like uh, the DJI Mavic or the Spark with a, with a few basic few dollar mods because of the um, because now they could go at least um, I've seen one mile two miles on the Spark I don't know about the Mavic. The Mavic's probably even more so. Which way am I heading? So I'm turning around, looking at the flashing. We are still green. You know, we're at five minutes. So normally this guy gets, if you're if you're pushing it pretty conservatively, this guy will get uh, eight to 12 minutes on it, easy. So we're gonna see exactly how long we can fly on the 2200s. So what I do plan on doing on this guy is maybe putting a uh, gimbal. The reason why I'm doing this video is because I have it around and I want to make some more and I want to have some more videos to film and number two is I plan on doing some he heavy mods on this guy to uh, see if I could get it to more compete with um, the, the Mavic and stuff stuff like that I'm sure that the distance is pretty good but um, very interested in, in trying to do a more high uh, long-range recording platform to get it up to uh, snuff with the Mavic, so probably a long distance 200-300 milliwatt transmitter with a small uh, with a small 3.5 uh, 3.5 gram camera or something like that mounted towards where a GoPro or some sort of GoPro knockoff. What I'm trying to do is trying to beat the budget of a Mavic or a Spark. So obviously the Spark and the Mavic are going to beat this guy as far as portability but as far as everything else um, a lot of drones are still based on this guy from DJI you have the the newer the newer uh, phantoms are based on this guy um, so we have a lot of different drones that are still based on this guy uh, on this size body so I was maybe even thinking about kind of taking the body apart and seeing if I could do kind of a setup like a Mavic and make it even smaller and make it where you still could put in larger batteries and then the next thing is uh, 
with this style of um, battery in it and the amp draw from these efficient motors and how big the prop size is um, I think it will handle lithium ion pretty well so um, I'm curious to swap it to a three cell lithium ion to try to almost double my flight time so here coming up on seven minutes we're gonna do a we're gonna do a GPS hold test so let's have it drop some altitude come back here over towards us I'm not gonna get too close so I don't get too much of it in the mic and then we're gonna check an altitude hold so here there's no nothing on the controller and there it is still doing nothing on the controller controllers nothing so it's got a decent GPS hold still even with the very first version of this guy still a really really good hold and everything like that still a very good flyer and obviously as I showed you with the with the full sh forward shot here it is full forward gain some altitude it still it still goes pretty good let's go full forward again so I'm full forward but this of course is with a pretty lightweight um, pretty lightweight package on it the FC40 is pretty light camera so here we're coming up on nine minutes we haven't really got any other flashings here yet but as I get closer uh, to the time limit that I'm thinking I'm going to get I'm going to bring it back closer so we don't have to worry about it disengaging and the reason why I'm not testing my my full distance is because if I do that then um, it will cut the camera and then it will, I'll lose my timing here and also it will stop recording so I want to keep that uh, to a minimum of going past the distance that I could possibly go and then every time I go to a new location I kind of have to look at the flashing on the back see what that looks like that's another thing that the downlinks on the stuff like the new map oh. we have a little bit of red light yep got a red light now so we're gonna come back come back and land over here somewhere in the vicinity usually I just grab it and then hold down on the throttle to, dis to turn it off and we're looking at exactly 10 minutes so we got a 10 minute battery life here on this guy with a 2200 pushing it gradually so I'm thinking that if you were flying just to record you could probably easily do 12 minutes and then what you would do is you would download the footage from the camera and send it to your phone just turn the camera on take it out of the plane uh, attach it to your phone download the footage this is a 720p camera so the footage is okay but um, I'm really excited to do some mods on this guy so some of the mods I'm thinking before I go into my final my final thoughts on it while I take it apart is um, putting lithium ion number one so I could get uh, even more power out of the same weight and uh, I think this would be perfect for the draw you could do the math on it um, 0.6 times it's drawing like 15 amps something like that so uh, 10 is 0 0.6 of 60 which is an hour 0 0.6 divided by 12 it's like 40 amps or something like that oh it's got to be less than that it's got to be like I said about 20 amps so about f 5 amps per motor which is really good but no, a few things that I'm going to try out this is bone stock everything on your stock no mods at all same props too they're even beat up and non-balanced non-balanced props everything so the first thing is try different bigger props then what I want to try to do is try to gear these motors to get even more efficiency and put even bigger props on it then try lithium ion then put on a GoPro style camera with a with some sort of VTX combo so not flying off Wi-Fi fly off my goggles and then um, yeah so gear these put bigger props on them 
put lithium ion and put a GoPro with a uh, with a VTX combo on it for a long distance and then uh, check that out and then uh, see if that will compete because like I said now these go about for $250 you can find some with including with the case so obviously a very great deal um, as you see it does it does most stuff pretty good uh, a few problems can't see your battery voltage can't see how far away you are no on-screen display about your altitude your velocity and or map so making long distance flights past line of sight very difficult as you see there I never got too far to where I couldn't see the orientation or couldn't figure out the orientation I can't see the lights from here but I could figure out the orientation and also using the camera camera right now only has about 100 meters but it'd be really nice to get very long distance flights out of it overall I, st I still think that you could build this into a very very good bang for your buck quad but uh, at $250 now or $200 maybe you could find it and uh, a spark you could fly on your phone for $400 is going to be a little difficult but if you could put a camera on there that could take 4k not not interpolated 4k but real 4k either with an EIS or a gimbal or uh, I might also want to try a mechanical gimbal. I'm very interested in trying a mechanical gimbal so you don't burn any extra batteries and also cheaper. But uh, something with EIS or a gimbal, um, I think you would take way better video than a Spark with a 1080p limited camera. But obviously the Spark is built for portability and ease of use. This guy will be uh, modded um, basically to the teeth with this guy. It's a very, very cool drone. Uh, main people that I would recommend this to are people that are going to mod it. It's still a pretty cool drone to fly around, kind of fly around your back, uh, you know, around places like this. Um, it is very big, so it makes a lot of noise. So it scares a lot of people. The Spark, not so much. Spark is pretty, uh, is, is way quieter, way smaller, so it doesn't scare people nearly as much. While this is the, the standard drone that people think about. So you're probably going to have a lot more problems flying this guy around in a spark at places like this. So um, definitely to modders. People that want to put their own camera on here that don't want to buy pre-built packages. So I'm at 3.7. Perfect. So basically the person I would recommend this to is somebody that doesn't want a pre-built package like a Mavic. Like a Mavic Air Pro Platinum or a Spark. Um, you want to build your own thing. This is still one of the most, I think, the, mo the most modifiable DJI. You don't have a smart battery or anything like that. You can pretty much do anything you want with it. And again, this is, this has only been firmware updated once. There's a whole bunch more firmware updates to this guy. Um, it's, it's the coolest DJI moddable package to where you can pretty much build whatever you want. And that's what I plan on doing. Alright, so I wanted to get this review out to uh, just kind of remind you guys of where we came from with the DJI series of Phantoms and other uh, drones. This was like their third drone they've ever come out with, the first one to ever have its own camera. So this was the very first drone to have its camera from DJI. So I wanted just to remind you guys of what that looked like back in the day and uh, try to transform it into something that can compete with modern day drones. So this has been Steven from RC Engineering. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe for more videos. And also head over to my Patreon. Link is in the description for some other free video content that is not available on my YouTube. I'd like thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Peace.